Hello, hello. I did promise that I was going to return to the St. Louis, and uh, now that I'm pretty much, well, I've been completely done with the grind for this ship for some time, I decided to return to one of the earlier games that I considered quite interesting as it shows a slightly different type of playstyle than what you would normally see in it. Now, these ships are very much long range HE focused. Uh, this type of playstyle pretty much starts at, I would say, probably the tier 6. At the tier 5, you can still be fairly aggressive because of how uh, weirdly the armor acts. Basically, you just get overpent constantly, so you can kind of go YOLO in those ships without any, too many issues. But once you start hitting tier 6 and you get a very solid citadel that can be quite easily punished, you have to start playing it safer at long range. More HE spam. Uh, after the uh, La Galicinière, you get the Algerie, which is very much a long range HE spammer. And it continues in this, this pattern to the Charles Martel and to the Saint Louis. The Henry IV also continues this very same pattern, but I won't get into the Henry IV too much yet, since I have been waiting for the recent update, which buffs the AA on it significantly, to see if it in any significant way changes the way the ship plays. Um, and that's why I haven't wanted to cover it yet, even though I've played almost 30 games in the Henry. The St. Louis though, as I mentioned earlier, it has quite strong guns. It uh, doesn't have the rail guns that you might hope for with, the, for example, the Rune or the Donskoy, but the HA chance is very significant, the AP is quite strong, and here we see one of the reasons why I included, uh, or I thought this was an interesting game, uh, a Cyclone is striking. And surprisingly, the French ships do fairly well in the Cyclones, and I think the reason for that is because they're not bad ships at close range. When you get close enough, you have the threat of the torps, you have the good, uh, the good uh, gun arrangement to allow you to sit nose in, or well, charge into them while dealing damage. So a cyclone isn't actually that bad for the French ships. In fact, the weakest place for French ships I've found is the mid-ground. They are quite strong if you get really close, because you get to use your strong AP, you get to use your torps, you you get to use your aggressive uh, gun angles. These are all good things, and at long range, you can abuse the huge range and the great fire chance. In fact, the weakest place I've found for the French cruisers tends to be the mid-ground, which is pretty interesting. The reason the mid-ground is kind of uh, bad for them is because, well, the speed advantage and the maneuverability doesn't help you much in avoiding shells at around 10-12 kilometers and battleships are easily able to punish you. As the citadels on these ships are quite significant and really not that hard to hit even with the so-called spaced armor, you can get punished very heavily. Uh, the Saint Louis does not have any sort of troll armor so you shouldn't be expecting it. So amusingly the mid-range is the most horrid. At long range, you can easily dodge the shells, you can make use of the great HE and the great fire chance, although my RNG right now isn't exactly showing off the great fire chance, is that I've got like 40 hits and one fire, but usually the, the long range or the short range are where the ship shines, whereas the mid-range is where it struggles. So this is why the cyclone isn't such a big deal. You just play long range until the cyclone hits, and then when the cyclone hits, you're able to utilize that close range and that's of course the reason for this commentary, because I kind of get to showcase that strength in it. Now, I've just been abusing uh, the smoke, using, or well, abusing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my, the Benson smoked up as he kept, so I just parked behind it, and I'm using these lazy arcs to just lob shells over the islands. You don't really want to get shot at, and that's also a very common theme in the French ships. Um, yes, they are quite fast with the speed boost. Yes, they are decently agile, but these ships really don't like being shot at. They just don't like it at all. They, these ships struggle when they are being actively shot at, uh, because, well, there's not much armor to talk about. They've gotten, the Henry has gotten some upgrades in this uh, sense, but in general you don't want to get shot at at all. It doesn't help that the HP pull on the St. Louis, St. Louis, sorry, uh, by habit, uh, pronounce it the way I would in my native language, uh, 
but only has 41k HP, which isn't really too much to brag about at tier 9, considering battleships can quite easily chunk that away with pretty much two citadels and a couple of pens. But overall, the speed and the range allow you to farm damage pretty efficiently in this thing. In fact, looking at the damage scores, I started checking over uh, my damage scores. I'm pretty much done with this ship. I played like 27 games in it. And uh, looking at my average, I actually averaged 111,000 damage in this ship, which is so far the highest I've averaged in any tier 9 cruiser. Um, the Rune and the Donskoy, I averaged about 91k damage in, and the Neptune, I averaged about 100k. So even those which I consider quite uh, um, Rune, Neptune, which I consider quite strong damage farmers, and Donskoy, also a strong long range battleship farmer, uh, they did not match up in damage to to the current ship. Of course, I am. I would say I'm a better player now than I was back when I played them, and uh, also I would say the ba the gameplay is even more passive and more battleship focused now, which automatically translates into more damage. But regardless of these uh, extenuating circumstances, it's still significantly more damage than I've done in any other tier nine cruiser. So that's worth mentioning. In terms of damage farming, uh, this ship seems quite consistent. It, the range and everything allows it to very consistently deal damage uh, pretty much in any situation. Wow, really? Only one Citadel on a Kutuzov broadside? I must have mis-aimed. Second attempt. Yeah, that's more like it. Close range, of course, as I mentioned earlier. Close range, the ship has no real issues. The squishiness is, of course, an issue, but other than that, the AP is very strong, especially against other cruisers and the torpedo angles, and in general, the gun placement allows it to really fight off close-range fights. In fact, uh, well, we're down four ships. We're down four ships, they're down two, so we're at a disadvantage, but we do have the cap advantage. And you might have noticed I've been playing quite conservative, quite safe, and conserving my HP. In fact, I've already done 80,000 damage, but I haven't taken a single point of damage. I've used a, I've hit behind the smokes, just lobbed shells from afar, and I've used that great range. And that's really how you want to play this ship if you do happen to end up in a cyclone game. You want to conserve your health until the cyclone strikes, and then when the cyclone strikes you can start playing more aggressive and um, basically utilizing the strengths that the ship has in close range. But in general that whole mid-range part, you, you want to avoid it, you want to somehow bypass it. Either by using terrain to get straight up close to someone, or just using terrain to stay at range. But um, it is fairly good at it. In fact, I've been I've been running the reload mode on this ship without any issues. I haven't seen the need for the range mode because the default range is already comfortable enough to be able to utilize range easily. Neptune pops up, switch to AP, of course. This arcing shell should easily go over this island. We can see if I can punish this guy. A pretty damn good hit, I'd say. On 18k damage. Kigero is, however, torping me, but thanks to the speed boost. I doubt he'll be able to hit a single shell. Switching back to HE for the Kagero, since he is right now the priority target. Chap the Neptune is behind the island, he survived, and with his heal he's probably healed up a good chunk of it. However, Citadels of course do not allow you to heal up as much as you would otherwise. Chapa is radaring me, which is a bit annoying considering I just used my repair. If he sets me on fire right now, I have some issues, but I think that they want to prioritize uh, my Fletcher buddy, who is dropping torps and sailing away. I think in fact the Chapai is behind the island now, so he can't really utilize his radar to the full strength. We are still down quite a fair amount of ships, um, This is our, our Fletcher is our last DD, they are capping A now and uh, they do have a significant ship lead, but the Cyclone has struck and I consider myself quite healthy and when it comes to brawling. Well, as I said, the ship is by no means bad at it. The AP power is significant, the torpedo angles are good, uh, the gun angles are great, so not too much to worry about. The Kagero on the right gets struck out by the Mayoko torps, and I know there's a, both a Neptune and a Chapa somewhere here, and there's also a Bismarck. So this is of course a bit of an issue, especially the Bismarck since I cannot easily citadel him. You see the torpedo angles, very allows you to 
very efficiently utilize them aggressively. Um, now, you don't have too many torps, of course, you only have three per side, and the damage isn't too overwhelming, but that uh, additional damage can't be frowned upon, especially when it comes to dealing damage to angled targets that what might otherwise be hard to deal with. Our Fletcher gets spotted, I can only assume uh, with Hydra, since he didn't spot them in return. So we are down to a 5 versus 7. He drops preemptive torps. I also drop some preemptive torps. Oh, the Bismarck shows himself. The fighter plane above me is what's spotting him. I think the Mayoko is fighter plane. So I utilize that. But it only lasts for so long. Oh. Switching should have stayed AP, but I did not expect these guys to pop out. But. I already saw that the Neptune was hiding behind the Chapaev, so I'm happily shooting here because I have a chance of hitting them both here. I can either hit the Chapaev in front or the Neptune behind. I land a Torp as well, so I'm just going to keep shooting this, uh, this uh, smoke puff behind us, and I think their smoke puff is giving me a lot of cover. Chapaev does pop uh, radar, or it might even be Bismarck now. I'm pretty sure this is Chapaev radar second time, and they fully focus me. This lets me know exactly where they are, so I just keep hammering shells down that way. But I need to disengage for now since a bit too much firepower aiming at me. And, in fact, my flooding kills the Chapaev. Uh, that initial HE volley, which I cursed about, that I, I accidentally shot HE instead of AP, it actually started a fire on the Chapaev, and the Chapaev, since he was being smoked up, thought it was safe to repair it. And then soon after my torps arrived and caused a flooding, which turned out to be a permanent flooding since he'd already used his repair. So that was quite fortunate in that sense. Now that the radar is dealt with, they still of course have their Hydra back there, but I've healed up. I've used my repair is about to come up cooldown again, my torps are reloading, so time to go back there and pick a second fight. And my second torps hit the Neptune that's trying to peek around that corner, and the fact that uh, his torp hit lets me know exactly where his positioning is. His smoke cannot last too much longer. I am tempted to just drop additional torps in there. I'm going close to see if their Hydra is active. I'm ready to turn hard right into the island if the if the Hydra turns out to be active. Oh, and there's the Neptune. Hiding behind the island, but we have a North Carolina pushing in from sea. And that's a very dead Neptune. Now the Bismarck is a bit of a issue here because uh, close range, of course, his guns can deal significant amount of damage. I could torp him, but my torps aren't enough to one-shot him. And he is running Hydro, which makes it a lot harder. Those Mayoko Torps seem pretty good though. I think the Bismarck is not is he reacting in time. Because the Mayoko is just spamming Torps down that down that path. And if this Bismarck doesn't react, then well, he's eating one at least. And it looks like he's eating the rest as well. Um, probably tunnel vision too hard or he was just in an awkward position because he kind of ended up getting surrounded so I know there is a Colorado somewhere down here I stay with AP loaded at these close ranges you shouldn't underestimate the amount of damage the French AP is surprisingly good especially against battleships it's got a nice amount of pen it's got high alpha damage so it turns out you can deal a good chunk of damage with a I kind of underestimate how slow these torps are. You see how slow they are, like most other torps would easily bypass this North Carolina, but it's taking a lot of time, so I make sure to give a give a warning, or well, my team, but my body gives a warning about those torps. They do pass by him without any risk, but that's something to keep in mind. You can't, they're not that fast. Gneiser now pops up, obviously focusing on the broadside North Carolina, but you can see the damage I'm already doing there. That was a 7k volley just with my front guns, and he was angled. Next volley, bounces. Of course, he's angled better now. My preemptive torps on the Colorado appear to be missing, but I can't focus on the Colorado now. I have to commit on this Gneiser now. 
can only hope North Carolina can deal with him and I will focus personally on the Gneiser now. I am fairly high of course because if I hit the hull you can see four bounces. I need to be hitting the superstructure as soon as he angles because that's the only way I can consistently deal damage. But I'm getting into close enough range that I will be able to finish him off with torps. He's turning, I assume to torp me. So I preemptively drop my torps, I slow down completely and I turn into him. In case he is dropping torps, I want to be able to dodge them, while of course at the same time landing my own torps on him. So the torps, in this game, 5 torpedo hits, I will consider it quite rare. Um, you don't land 5 torpedoes too often um, in any St. Louis game, in fact you shouldn't expect it to. But when you do happen to get into cyclones or brawling, they are a surprisingly useful tool. In fact, in this game, they netted me, well, two kills. The Chapaev and the Gneiser now. And uh, they are a bit of a niche, but I actually like the addition of the Torps to the ships because it gives them so much more punching power in these brawling situations uh, when you do actually end up in them. Overall, though, um, there's not going to be much else happening in this game. The Bismarck, well, he seems to be rushing down the side and we got a whole welcoming committee for him four versus one i very much doubt his ability to survive this but overall a fairly comfortable game for me Hundred and ninety-seven thousand damage in a cyclone in what is considered a long range he spammer type of ship so the saint louis is a very strong ship i mean it's hard to put it any other way uh it lacks the early game uh, capacity to make plays, which is something all the French line suffers from. Uh, when your only useful consumable is a defensive AA, I mean speed boost, heal, repair, these are all selfish consumables and you can't really impact the game early on. You have no radar, you have no smoke, you have no nothing. So most of the early game um, is sadly spent heavily reliant on your team. All you can do is sit back and farm damage and hope to have an impact through damage alone. You can't have that game deciding impact that you could in a Baltimore or you could in a Neptune by getting so close to the cap you can actively hunt the DDs and such things. So you will struggle with those things but as a pure damage farmer the french line is excellent it's very very good at farming damage i think this was my first win of the day hence the big xp numbers a lot of credits of course since it was such a good game looking at the team score uh, not too special but considering uh, the type of game i still thought this was an interesting show of uh, how well the, the saint louis does in uh, brawling battles as well Looking at the detailed report, not too much potential damage, since most of the time I prefer to not get shot at at all, which is kind of what you want to do in this ship. Um, as I said, they don't deal with being shot at too well at all. Uh, 43k damage from the torps and the rest from the main guns as expected. You can see the average damage per shell significantly higher with the AP of course, as expected in this case. Uh, you can find my recommended build in my previous St. Louis commentary but I'm pretty much done with this tier 9, I've already moved to the Henry 4, but this was a pretty enjoyable grind. In fact, the only reason I 3 xp the last of it was that I was pretty bored of it and I wanted to unlock the Henry, uh, but there's really no need to 3 xp this ship. It's a very comfortable grind, which is a nice change compared to some previous tier 9s that have not been very enjoyable. Wargaming has gotten a lot better at this, uh, and a lot of the recent tier 9s have been pretty damn good this one included.